Hello fellow modelers and styling fanatics, welcome back to my channel. I hope that everyone is doing fine and enjoys the hobby. Concrete Banker is back again with another one of its notorious episodes. On today's episode, me and Past George are working on a part 2 of our Volkswagen Beetle Type 82 from CMK, CMK in 1 to 35th scale and kit number TAF T. Z, uh, 35014 So um, I have uh, talked with uh, with a couple of guys that watch my videos with you, the viewer uh, because I had the crazy idea to do a step by step uh, painting and weathering tutorial how to anyway I'm not gonna name it tutorial or how to because this is not a uh, I am not suited for a uh, for teacher and this is not a, a rule this is the way I do stuff this is the way I approach my builds and I don't want you I don't want you guys to take it for uh, granted I, I want you guys to uh, to to see it with the perspective of how I do stuff if you like if you like it or if you want to try it and you find useful please do you are free to do it but remember that this is my way if that suits you it's that's okay if that doesn't suit you at all that's okay again if that suits you a little bit it's okay by me uh, you can always you know integrate it in your style and create your own way it's one of us is free to uh, work as as he see fits uh, so I don't want to bore you guys any longer on this episode we are painting and uh, weathering the the chassis area of the beagle and we are uh, putting this sub assembly together so uh, I hope that you guys won't find this video um, boring because it's a, it is a big one Anyway, you all know the drill, grab yourself a seat, make yourself com comfortable, crack the mandatory cold one and let's see what me and past George have in stock for this episode. Hi guys, welcome back to part uh, 2 of our uh, Volkswagen Beetle Type 82E build and uh, I don't want to bore you much so I am going to cut straight to the chase. I have been conversing with uh, a lot of you guys because I had I have the crazy idea to paint this on camera and why this is a crazy idea mainly because it takes me time to paint stuff and uh, it's probably going to be uh, boring for you guys to see me do that but anyway since most of you guys want to see such a thing uh, of course and I am going to uh, do it but before I start uh, painting uh, stuff and when I say stuff I am talking about different sub assemblies because I'm not gonna paint this thing all in one go because I, first I don't have a time and second I always do it in sub assemblies uh, before I start uh, applying paint onto the, the plastic I wanna improve some stuff and my my one of my first improvements is going to uh, be related with the the engine the engine okay this kit is a curbside for whoever that is not familiar with curb what curbside means it means that uh, it, it, it is a car kit with no detail with no engine detail so that what the curbside means and, uh, uh, what is my first problem you may ask my first problem is although that I have uh, exhaust uh, detail over here we don't have the distinctive pipes of uh, exhaust pipes of, um, of of the beetle we don't have the exhaust tips now um, how I am going to remedy that over here 
I have cutted a piece of earbud, of plastic earbud um, to fix that. Now you're gonna ask me where did they find plastic earbuds? I had them laying around when the, they changed the material from plastic to paper and I kept them for um, oh sorry my cat I kept them for scraps building material like this like exhausts so I have cut it two pieces of pipe over here I am going to sand a little bit the the car body over here and I am going to fit them uh, to fit them in now this I am going to do it off camera mainly because it's going to take me some time to sand them fit them see the see if they are uh, properly fitted and to do that again until they are going to look uh, as they are supposed to be looking so I'm gonna start with that and I am going to be back and now we are ready to go guys as I've said before I have attached um, the uh, scratch built scratch built anyway the modified uh, earbuds I have made them look as exhaust tips I know that they probably are a bit uh, oversized, but that's okay. Uh, better, better a bit oversized than uh, no exhaust tips at all, if you ask me. I could do um, smaller ones. I could find a smaller uh, cylindrical shaped uh, plastic, but uh, I am not so good at drilling holes in small plastic uh, parts drilling small holes in plastic parts sorry so this will have to do for the time being another thing that I have done is uh, the application of um, uh, epoxy putty to integrate the exhaust tips with the rest of the exhaust system apart that I have uh, since I had a spare putty on spare epoxy putty on my hands I have opted to uh, fill the holes a little bit and just sand them I didn't go overboard and when I say overboard I mean uh, I didn't insist it a lot since this is going to be the uh, the lower part of the vehicle and it's not gonna be visible when we finished I just since I have it in hand, I found a good. Uh, I found it a good idea just to fill those e ejection pin marks a little bit. Now, what are we going to do? As you can see, I have removed everything that I have uh, glued with a uh, blue tack. Glued. I have uh, placed uh, temporarily in place with blue tack, and I am ready to paint to base coat the thing but before I start painting I want to point a few stuff uh, first so uh, how my painting process is I always detail paint everything uh, a majority of the things as I uh, as I like detail painting to be because I like detail painting I have to say now when you have different colors and, and I say different colors I'm I'm talking about the chassis and the engine and the exhaust this is going to in my mind they are three different colors we have the garb the car body color on the on the chassis steel on engine and a little bit uh, of rust on the exhaust still with uh, a little bit uh, rust on the exhaust so I am going to paint how I am going to do to, to proceed how I, how am I going to start since the majority of this uh, surface is the chassis this is the first color that I am going to apply 
the first color I'm going to apply is the chassis color and in my case since I am doing the camoed version of the staff car the least fancy staff car base coat is going to be dark yellow I will uh, use model L for this uh, in this case color number is 71.025 and I am going to dilute it using tap water okay so this is going to be my base coat and the first coat of color that I am going to apply I am doing this because I'm gonna do a slap job a slap job uh, since this color covers the majority of the area I don't care I'm gonna do it quickly then I am going to proceed with the engine and there I have to be extra careful not to mess the, the, the rest of the thing but uh, this, is, this is a better way to do it because the engine is a smaller uh, area you know to paint so you don't have to be extra careful uh, for a, a, long, a longer time period so that's why I am uh, starting like this I hope that this made sense and I'm not blathering so what am I going to use of course I have a towel a paper towel it always comes in handy my color and I am going to use my an old paintbrush because I don't care if it has a, a, a great tip because it is for base coating and I don't need to be precise to base coat this thing as we proceed, I am going to use a better, a, a, a better brush, a more pointy one, for the details. So we have a paper towel, our color, our paint brush, water, and our trusty old one. <laughs> the palette that I have since I've started modeling and I always and I always and I don't want to decommission yet because he is gonna dissolve in my hands <laughs> so I am going to add some moisture onto my uh, paintbrush remove most of it I'm gonna shake my paint I know and I am going to warn you guys that this part won't be as exciting let's see let's put this here so you can have a look of how I am going to proceed random drops of color I don't have a recipe in hand more moisture to my brush and let's go I want to warn you guys that I don't dilute the model air colors a lot because they are already come pre-diluted in uh, in the in the jar so I mostly use them straight out of the pot some of them anyway one of them is dark yellow now I don't care a lot about coverage because this is going this is the the first coat of paint you know I just need paint to go everywhere just a small bit of paint to be in every place this is my only concern I paint as I, I paint as I go I move on one direction as you can see
whenever it is possible over here at the curved side it is a little bit difficult to do that Now over here at the grooves I'm not gonna apply and paint at all because over there there is another part that it is coming, there is the, the part of the rear suspension that I will need to glue over there. So I will leave it bare plastic just for just to help the glue uh, have a surface to tack on. Now you're gonna see bubbles because I have added a small uh, amount of water in my paintbrush. But don't worry about it. About, don't worry about them. I have found that uh, a model color, uh, model air, and model color. Uh, Rains paint rains from Vallejo tends to dry flat, you know, to, to self level itself and uh, tends to dry as in as we want it to do. Flat and self leveling. You just need to be a little bit careful. Now, keen uh, eyed amongst you will see that I haven't applied primer, and you are correct, I haven't applied primer because this is not a, a multimedia kit, you know, that it's it has not it, it doesn't have um, photo etched parts, uh, resin parts, etc. etc. It's just it is just plastic. And I have found it out that primer is not always, you know, a, a, a must do step. I have to do step. Hopefully you get the idea of uh, what I uh, of how I do how I paint stuff. Now this is not my best, you know, uh, best way of working around this, but it is how I apply my my base coats. I go slappy like this in front in the the first coat and then. I become more precise and more, you know, careful as I do as I proceed with more coats, like onto the onto our second coat. But you get the philosophy. You will see that I tend to move the the paintbrush in one direction. Now I will need to add a little bit of water. Let's see. 
now I am not a fancy guy I don't have a fancy you know uh, thing that it can hold my my model as I paint I hold it by hand and I keep in mind to be careful this is not always achievable but it is what it is guys until I find a tool that until I not I find until I decide to buy a tool to hold my kids I am going to use my hands to hold stuff as I paint let me add a couple of drops I also hope that I am holding the, the, the car in a place where you can see it on, in frame to be honest with you because I don't look through the camera right now. And I don't know if I am in frame but hopefully I am. And that's my first coat of paint. Now I will leave this to dry totally and then I am going to apply another uh, coat of paint. On the second coat of paint I will be more caref careful and more meticulous which means that I am going to be uh, to, to make sure that every inch of the, the chassis is covered in paint and then I'm gonna leave this second hand to dry this second coat to dry and we are going to be back so okay guys we have as you can see we have base coat the the chassis and now we need to move on to the engine uh, while I was waiting for the chassis to dry I have uh, painted the the area here with uh, dark grey just to create a shadow box uh, because the front suspension system attaches over here and another part but I want to make sure that uh, nothing is visible so enough with that I am going to show you the next color here it is modular metallic this time 71.072 this will be used for every engine detail over here I am moving into this uh, paintbrush which is a, a, a better shaped one it has a better and a more sharp edge and we are 
starting to paint right now I would say instantly but I don't know why I hesitated now about the metallic range of Vallejo I never thin them down because they are also thinned and because they are metallics and metallics don't work well with water to be honest with you guys this is what I have found it out now I will try to be uh, meticulous and to be clean you know to be as um, careful as I can so I won't need to uh, correct any mistakes but even if I do a mistake I would return back with dark gray, a yellow and correct it mistakes are to be done as I've said multiple times you guys will see that this color has way better coverage than a uh, dark yellow and it is almost uh, perfect in uh, one coat but just for good measure I would give it another one off camera of course because I don't want to bore you uh, uh, any further now I am doing that already but I don't need to overdo it you know steady hands keep your breath to like a sniper <laughs> to make your hands steadier always keep your uh, elbows onto your bends this will also help uh, help you to have a steadier hand get a good grip on your hit on the thing that you are painting i have uh, i will say and go slow you don't need to rush slow and steady wins the race as always paint our exhaust tips our custom exhaust tips I will say let's pick up the final detail which is over here this must be the transmission box if I am not mistaken 
where this part resembles it. I don't know if the actual transmission box of a beetle looks like so. Okay. First coat of paint is done. I will of course uh, apply another one off camera and then I am going to return, return with more things to paint. Well guys, I did a thing off camera and uh, detail painted wheels and suspension assembly. <coughs> Well, I didn't uh, actually finish painted, painting the wheels because I, I, I wanted to show you, but the ones I finished painting are the rear ones. I'm gonna leave one aside because both of them are the same. So, for the suspension system, this part, I have opted using A14 steel grey with uh, uh, color code 71.336 I find this color to be uh, spot on for uh, uh, for steel and iron parts of uh, cars especially the ones that uh, are located underneath the underneath uh, onto the chassis area of course dark yellow onto the rim and uh, for the the rubber the rubber for the tire i have always opt i i am always opting for panzer races vallejo panzer races 306 dark rubber this is my go-to color uh, when i am painting tires now say let's leave this aside and same thing happened here still gray onto the suspension assembly rubber, rubber uh, dark rubber onto the wheels and uh, I am I wanted to show you uh, another thing how I paint the wheels I paint them in sections and when I, and when I say sections one section is the the rim of the of the tire this side second section is this side of the tire and third section is this one now I am going to pour a, a drop of paint onto my palette over here. Just a drop is enough; would be enough. I am going to grab water with my paintbrush, mix it mix paint and water onto my palette and then we are going to start I am uh, placing my my paint brush on a 90 degree angle holding my breath and trying to be to keep it steady trying to I am slowly turning the wheel using my left hand and I am keeping the the hand with the paintbrush steady so I can have a clean uh, paint edge if you know what I mean now this is the part where it becomes a little bit tricky for me And there we have it. That's a kinda easy and quick way to paint tires around rims. And now I am going to leave the part aside to dry. Now normally 
it is the time since we have everything painted and detail painted it is the time for us to attach uh, the parts onto our chassis but I am going to skip this step for a little bit uh, I am going to skip this step because we are uh, not making we are not uh, building a pristine vehicle and when I say pristine vehicle I am talking about uh, a brand new vehicle that uh, rolled out fresh uh, that rolled fresh out of the factory <coughs> we are recreating a vehicle that it's been out there in the field for some time which means that I will need to weather the chassis now uh, my first steps of weathering uh, no 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 sorry scratch that now uh, chassis is a really good basis for us to try new things on weathering because it is the part that uh, no one will see once we stick the thing onto the diorama so you guys if you wanna experiment with something with a new technique or something you do it <coughs> onto this part because if anything if anything goes south that's okay either way the vehicle is gonna stay like this and nobody's gonna see it uh, now what is going to be my next step my next step will be to apply mud over here at the at the four corners at the wheel housing because this is the, the place where mud will accumulate only this is the place where mud will accumulate over here at the, the flat area of the chassis no mud will accumulate because this area is you is getting wet all the time due to water if, if the par, if the car is passing over water it it rubs over um, weeds and stuff like that so this area would be relatively clean f from mud so my next step will be to add mud over here as, as I've said to the wheel wells then I am going to um, give it a, a, a dark wash a dark brown wash or a homemade wash I'm gonna think about it I'm gonna clean the wash of course as usual you know clean it leave it only in the crevices and detailed parts of the chassis and then I am gonna dry brush the dry brush the whole thing with gun metal just to give it this metallic hue. You know, if a, if a, a metallic if a, if it rubs, it should be you know a pen should be removed, and we're gonna have that metallic uh, sign uh, showing through. So let's start from the mud uh, application first. Now, for the mud application, as always, I'm gonna use this product from Vallejo. Is Dark Earth 26.218, uh, an acrylic product. Indeed, it is an acrylic. You can thin it with water, and you can manipulate it with water. Uh, you can uh, create something. You can create the same product with homemade materials. Uh, seen a friend of uh, a friend of mine he has also a youtube channel create uh, made a video of how to create the same stuff if i can uh, locate that video i will leave uh, i will leave a link to the same uh, to the, the description section below anyway i am using it because as you can see it is almost finished and it tends to dry inside my bottle uh, and I want to use it so it doesn't go to waste now I'm going when you use a product like this grab a sacrificial brush because uh, the because this uh, paste tends to to get trapped in a tra in a brass bristles in a brass bristles so the brass will be you know dead after a while so don't you use your good brushes on this 
And as I've said, I am only going to apply it onto the wheel wells because there is where the mud accumulates in vehicles, in wheel wells only, except if it is a vehicle that has a stuck in mud for a while and you just uh, pulled it out of there. Now I am stippling it, you can see it is a thick paste right now because as I've said it is slowly drying inside my jar. can see I am trying to uh, lead the, the mud in uh, edges and crevices of the wheel wells in the corner over there and now I am gonna dip my paint brush on the water and apply a little bit on top of it just to soften the whole thing and to make it more easy to, ma to manipulate once again guys uh, I am using this product because I just want to get rid of it. I just want uh, I don't want it to <coughs> to go to waste. You can also uh, make the same thing with homemade materials. You don't need to buy everything. You just need to research, you know, you just need to go out there, YouTube land, and uh, research, research, I mean, you can always find an alternative way to um, create this product with uh, materials that you have laying around in-house, or you can always uh, forage for materials when it comes to modeling, and if you ask me, you have to forage mainly because it is cheap and mainly because it gives you skills and techniques that will come in handy for the future we don't need to buy all those products that company companies sells us okay it makes our life easier but it also takes a toll on your uh, bank account and since you, we can uh, avoid this, why not? <laughs> Once again, stapling motion. Here it is how it glues, uh, looks. You can add more water to remove uh, or uh, uh, make the, the mud layer thinner. You can manipulate it in all kinds of ways with water. Let's move on to the front uh, <coughs> wheel wells. I am adding water as I go to my paintbrush. I dip it. I dip it in water first, and then I dip it to the jar of of mud. This is going to be a long video, I hope you guys don't get bored and I hope that I, I am keeping you good company on to, while you work on to your stuff as well. I know that my videos are not fancy, I am not a, a good video editor and to be honest with you guys I don't have the time to to learn how to be a good one. Now the more water you add, the more... Uh, be careful because the more water you add, the more time it will take for the mud to dry. Come on. 
Now some of you guys will tell me that I don't need to do it because this is a part of the of the vehicle that we will never uh, see but I don't have a problem with it. I like my obsessive compulsive dissolve disorder tells me to do it, you know. Tells me to recreate a vehicle as as realistic as realistic yeah, as good as possible. I know that mud w it I know mud will be there so I am cool with that even if I don't see it again. Now I am going to leave my paintbrush on top inside uh, my water jar the sacrificial paintbrush. I'm gonna close the lid and here is what we are looking uh, at for the time being this will dry a uh, flat it is shiny now due due to water you know pin was sludge slash sludge was time guys uh, i opted to make my own uh, concoction uh, two materials simply one of them is an oil color from ABT Arp Teilung. Sorry for the pronunciation. It is ABT 160 engine grease. I really love this uh, oil paint. This must be the only oil paint of the range that I have in hand. Uh, one day I will be able to acquire them all. So just a small bit of this and uh, uh, enough uh, odorless mineral spirits in a jar, mix them well over here once again use a sacrificial brass and with this one mixed you just paint the whole area this will give it a, a, a hue of color and it will seep in every corner and crevice crevice I don't know how to properly pronounce it and this will give it a proper dirty look now I will probably uh, give it another coat of wash but you get the idea I, I wanted you to get I wanted you to give it I wanted to give you an idea oh my god and uh, I wanted you to see it uh, change you know to, to, to see the change now I will leave this to dry, uh, to dry properly, I will add a little bit more of oil paint over here and I am gonna give it another coat um, and then I am going to return back with a clean jar only with uh, odorless mineral spirits and give it a proper uh, clean, you know clean the the, the the wash from the areas that it is not supposed to be uh, while I before I coated this I have coated all the other sub assemblies just to uh, to to make them even with uh, the whole thing and uh, uh, because they needed to be coated as well I don't we don't have to uh, have a clean part in a, doesn't work to have a clean part in a dirty vehicle that's why as you can see most of the the wash is uh, already dried it has I have applied another coat as I've, I've said you a thicker coat because I wanted to get I, I wanted it to have even more depth next to it I have a jar okay a, a, a bottle lid that I use for random stuff I keep them around because I use them for random stuff and because 
I am uh, something like a squirrel. I am a trash collector anyway. I have filled it with odorless mineral spirits. I have grabbed my sacrificial brass. I, I am full of sacrificial brasses and I will dip it inside here, remove the majority of uh, the mineral spirits and I will start cleaning the excess wash gradually. This process takes a really long time. You have to be gentle because you may rub some uh, paint off. You don't have to scrub it, just gently touch it. Gently touch it will do the work. Don't you have also to keep in mind that you don't need to uh, clean it 100%, leave uh, just a thin film of uh, wash in the area, just to tint the pre existing color, in our case, dark yellow, give it a slight tint. And you have also to keep in mind that you have to remove the 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 wash from only from the uh, the areas that you don't need to have it. You know, okay. Oops. go slow, listen to some tunes, I usually have uh, vi uh, videos of friends uh, playing in the background, you know, listening to them, just to keep me company, of course pronounced edges will be clean, no dirt will accumulate there, not much at least, you know. Stippling motion will also help you in some places just to it is useful to leave just enough wash. I don't know if my camera can catch it but you can see that I can manipulate uh, the excess wash to my will. I can drive it where where I want it to be. In general, I am re kinda reactivating it. That's what I like in uh, oil paints. You can actually reactivate them. And if you don't want to reactivate them again, just seal the whole thing. In a, in a glossy varnish, whenever it's totally dry, I would leave it to dry at least for a day before I, I before I seal the whole thing. Be extra careful not to leave any watermarks because you know if you use a lot of mineral spirits in this uh, step 
you may create some uh, watermarks not with water but with minerals right here oh come on come on I don't want to touch you a lot I tend not to touch my work as I paint it because I am so I am prone to knock off parts, small parts. Trademarks here that I will need to remove. I hope you guys get what I am doing. If you hear any noise in the background, there is my neighbors. It is noon here, so they do their thing. You can adjust the amount of mineral spirits in your paintbrush by uh, rubbing it onto a paper towel as I do. Which is an another, another great thing that you can do with uh, oil paints. You can add, you can uh, remove, you can do whatever you have flexibility. My advice is uh, that everyone needs to know how to use them, needs to uh, experiment with them and needs to at least have a uh, an idea of how they work. It is a game changer, guys, I tell you. You can do all kinds of crazy and interesting stuff. They can transform a build I'll tell you this much. As you can see right now, I have a lot of mineral spirits in my brush because there is a lot of oil paint that I need to remove from here, from this part. I gradually adjust it as I go, adjust the amount of mineral spirits, I, I remove any oil paint trapped to my paintbrush
if you do a mistake you can always redo this step you can always uh, um, you know you can always work again on it you can always add remove etc etc I am sorry that I am not talking right now, but I am trying to decide if I like the effect or if I want to add more, remove more, etc. 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 I need to remove a little bit from here. Okay. I need to remove a lot of from here. Doesn't need to be there. Should remove it from the exhaust tips. that I like the results here is a closer look let me a command focus look I cannot see right now through my camera okay and I think that that's enough I maybe do some tweaking of camera but for the time being I think that's enough now as I've said my next step will be to dry brush the, the whole um, uh, the whole chassis well it's been a while but from what I can remember I have left you guys to the point where I was supposed to clean the the excess uh, 
the excess wash and that's what I did off camera. As you can see I have cleaned everything and here is how it looks. And now the only uh, step, the only weathering step left is the, the dry brushing. Now I am going to dry brush uh, not everything, just the majority of the quote unquote ribs over here and turns in bay and this small part here. So for the dry brush, uh, the dry brushing technique, I am going to use gunmetal. 71.072 I wanna you I wanna use this color for dry brushing just to give uh, the 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 metal to give this thing the the metallic look you know since it is a metal thing that uh, um, stuff rub rubs all over it all the time since it's a chassis. Uh, some wear and tear uh, should show through so uh, I am going to pull it, put a drop of our paint in our palette I am going to moisten my brush a little bit just a, a tiny smudge load my brush with paint unload most of it and start working over here only slight and gently touch uh, slight and gently you just only need to touch the surface if you go crazy you will have effects that you don't wish to as you can see only the raised surfaces uh, color, ca color stays only on top the raised surfaces I am always loading and unloading my brass And I am hitting our subject from different angles. Now this effect is really faint. I am not sure that you are going to be able to, to see it. But believe me, to see it through my camera. But believe me, it is there. you have to be able to be up close and personal to see that as I've said it is there and also you don't need to go crazy just a small amount of, of paint is enough now this is how it looks and for the time being I think that we are done over here let me clean my brush hmm. and let me think about it a little bit okay I am going to leave this to totally dry and I am going to be back for the final assembly of uh, the chassis sub-assembly. Okay, we have made it to the part of the, the final uh, assembly of the chassis. So we won't paint anything else. Let's remove our paper, what we needed anymore, for a while. Now... Let's start from the rear first and attach our rear wheels together with the rear suspension system. Remember that that's the, the low rider part. You can make a lowered vehicle. 
if you wish. Okay, this, lo this looks just fine. Keen night amongst you will see that extra thing uh, ships through Vallejo, Modeler. It's through the color. This is happening because I haven't. Uh, um, I haven't gloss coated the vehicle, I never do, to be honest with you guys, because I don't have an airbrush in my disposal, well I have now, but I am not familiar yet with it, so it will be a while until I use it. And now let's move on to the front part, the front suspension system, so... Here we need to be a little bit extra careful. Let me grab the contactor and unclog it. Just a moment guys. I am using contacta because it will create a stronger bond than extra thin. It will take some time to cure, significantly more time to cure, but it will create a stronger bond. Okay, and now we have this part that I left aside while I was building the whole thing in purpose. And that's almost everything. Uh, painting and weathering onto the lower uh, onto, onto, onto the chassis if you are following my build step by step doing the same stuff as I do that's what you are supposed to be looking at Remember that I haven't done anything except painting onto the the outer uh, part of the wheels. This will come later. All our work has been concentrated over here, onto the chassis. And I think that it's about time for us to wrap this episode up. And with all that said and done, we have made it to the end of this episode. On our next episode, we will probably start painting and weathering the interior of our beetle. And we will see if we are going to continue further on. It depends on uh, how long it's gonna take us. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful and interesting and stick along for the next one. Before I go, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that watched this video. A special thank you to all my subscribers, old and new ones. You guys are the best and you are the reason I keep doing these videos. For the, Now, for the newcomers out there that encounter one of my videos for the first time, welcome guys. I hope that you like what I do. If so, you all know what to do. Leave a like, comment with your thoughts and opinions, share the video if you believe it deserves to be shared, or even consider subscribing for more builds to come your way. Until the next time fellow modelers and friends, take care and model on, it was that Mofo Damon signing out.